Last time on True Magnum TV. Take off to go the route we planned on coming down, and we can't see 20 yards. So one of those hunting days, that too bad you had to climb 3,500, 3,000 feet to, to figure it out. We tracked this bongo for four to five hours, and we hit a, hit a little clearing. I thought it was over. That ridge is a long way off. We may not get back tonight, but it's time to throw caution to the wind, take a chance, hope the weather holds, hope my knee holds, and go get a tour. In Russia, it's been four days since James Bryan began his hunt for Kuban Tur in the Caucasus Mountains, and today he is pulling out all the stops. Today we throw caution to the wind where that line of rams had crossed out of our range. They've gone beyond that and upslope that spiny ridge and are even farther. Those rams may be out of our range, but we're just gonna bust it as hard as we can. In order to get into position to take a shot, James and his team will have to hike over two miles with an elevation change of 2,000 feet across broken and slippery rock. With his knee surgery only six months ago, James is taking his body to the limit. This has been a pretty tough hunt with the elevation gain and the terrain and all. The good news is my knee has held up just fine so far. This next area looks a little bit tougher. It's kind of that one slip in your dead kind of stuff. So far, this is every bit as tough as it looked like from over there. After three hours, James and his team reach their objective, and there are positive signs that Tur are close by. These drags are so fresh. Even in this heat and the sun beating on the shale, they're very moist in the dirt that they kicked up, and many are going this way. So we're thinking they may be just not far from us, but we can't see them. The team is hoping to climb to the top of the ridge and spot the tur before the tur spot or smell them. The guide returns with no tur in sight. Well, the tur are not here, so we're just going to have to keep moving on. Hopefully, they've moved off into some area that we can access and haven't left the country completely. In Nepal, the Himalayan mountains have weather that is unpredictable and at times unrelenting. After yesterday's showers, Bo Morgan is ready to get back on the slopes and after a borrow. So after the weather deal yesterday, pretty rainy and, and then broke to clear skies in the morning. Oof, here we go again. Hopefully some of the sheep will move down a little bit, kind of drop in this basin, that's what we're hoping for. So. Today, the team will be ascending over 5,000 feet in elevation. Not an easy task to do day in and day out. Either breathe or talk, you get one, one or the other. Pretty good pull up here, it's really steep. Do this stuff, so just keep slogging it. About another zillion steps. It really, your body's just craving oxygen, so all you're thinking about is stopping and taking four breaths and then you're settled again, but it's, you just gotta keep hiking, hiking, hiking. Despite investigating the ridge lines as they hike, the sheep remain out of sight. Things are not going uh, as planned. These sheep have you know, there's there not a lot of snow this spring, so everything's a little bit higher. And then I think a little bit of the, the wind going up in these bowls, just how they're facing and what the predominant westerly winds, it's not helping us at all in our quest. 
but there may be another reason for the lack of barl in the area. Snow leopard, snow leopard tracks. Part of the reason things are so high in the cliffs. Seen snow leopard tracks in the sand. You know, once they start using an avenue in an area, then them sheep will kind of move away from that, adding to some of the frustration here. No matter the cause for the sheep's disappearance, Bo and the team continue to trek higher. In Cameroon, Rob Dunham and his team are back on the trail of their target, the bongo. Considered one of the toughest hunts in the jungle, the key to success in this terrain is having a crew who knows the land and animals better than anyone. Very, very fresh. The people that are here, I mean, they have to survive here. They've survived here for generations, so you know they got skills. And to be with someone, seeing the calling, uh, seeing their tracking capabilities, second to none that I've seen in Africa, and just a general knowledge of the land. Um, to say impressive is, is an understatement. Um, sort of a privilege to be and to learn a little bit from these guys. We're getting closer and closer and closer. You can smell. Fresh. Pretty good. Bongo hunting, as well as others, uh, big game uh, hunting, is a very psychological thing. You must keep on trying and be very focused, uh, not give up. Uh, luckily, Rob is a professional hunter, the same as I am, so, so we, we, we don't give up easily. We know we must stay on the track and be focused. Staying focused is one thing, but when the bongo enters the thick brush, all bets are off. <clears throat> Some of this stuff is virtually impenetrable, you can't get through it. So they send the guys around this thick, thick stuff to see if we can take the track up and carry on. If the team can't pick up the trail, the hunt can be over for the day. And it looks like uh, the tracks have gone cold. The guys are out looking for it. Man, you know, I hope we get back on it because we need this bongo. Without the bongo, Rob's exploratory mission could be a fail, not only for him, but for the entire party. Like all conservation hunting, Pedro's ability to attract clients to this exploratory area to conduct business, provide jobs, and aid in anti-poaching efforts is dependent on his ability to conduct a successful hunt. The boys have tracked this animal. Um, all in a big block, we've come across our original road that we came in on this, in the morning. And um, they're calling Bello, the driver, to see if he can uh, meet us here. And I don't know any more than that. I would guess if they know this is a block, they may go see if the animal's around. That's what I'd do. But if they don't know this area good enough, then we, uh, I'm assuming we'll get Bello to come, get anything else they need, and carry on right through till we need to, whether it's two more hours or five more hours. In Russia, James Bryan is chasing Kuban Tur high in the Caucasus Mountains, risking life and limb for a chance at the perfect billy. Man, we've seen a lot of tour on this hunt. It's been great, and I've had my opportunities. But I got guys wanting to come on this hunt next year, and it's going to be a lot harder sell if I don't bring one home. Taking their time scaling the rock slopes, James and his team make it to the edge of the ridge. As we crest the ridge, I spot a nice tur, 
but I gotta admit, after the miss, my nerves are kinda getting the best of me. If I'm gonna take one home on this trip, I'm gonna have to keep it together and stay focused. In Nepal, at 13,000 feet, Bo Morgan and his team spot a herd of barrel across the basin. Siri, there's, there's like 10 animals out there, but I wanna get close to this and look in the basin. As soon as we pop in the basin where we wanna be, we got some sheep there close. Um, get the scope set up, check them out, and uh, we pick up, here comes a whole string of sheep. Okay, I see a good one. Siri, give me the range finder. Throw the scope on them and there is a couple studs in it. I mean, really, really big blue sheep. It's 430 yards. I'm not gonna take that shot. Just, they keep climbing. Basin. We're gonna do the same now. They've all moved out. We can't locate any more eyeballs on us. We're gonna try to make a move across this basin, climb like they did, and then come around on top of them. Wind's starting to change bad again, so we need to get out of this position so we can find them. Might be exciting. We decided to climb the one side of the canyon and get high enough that, you know, that. Our wind keeps going up, so that's what we tried. Got up in the cliffs, got above them, didn't know if they're gonna come out below us. You know, they were running and we lost sight of them. Coming down, we didn't know if they're gonna cross the cliffs below us, come out in the cliffs and uh, same same level. Just had no idea. Bo and the team hike over a mile across the mountains in hopes of moving in closer for a better shot at the bar. Staying behind the wind and out of sight is key. I thought they'd come down and feed or water and then lay up in the cliffs somewhere down lower than us. And, um, and that's what the local guide kind of anticipated as well. If everything goes as planned, the sheep should be just out in front of them. Five or six hundred yards where we last saw them, they were bedded, everything was calm, and we peek over, gone. Not, a, not an animal. Of the 20-something animals, gone. So I don't know if we did it, the snow leopard did it, the wind changed, we didn't, none of those things, we thought we were perfect. We thought it was going to be a done deal, and zip. So here we go, we got to start all over again, go find some more, or find out where these went. Got to this little basin here. I see him right there. So many groups this morning. There's a set of tracks that go up through here. A set of tracks that go across there. A set of tracks that go across there. We're going to be on the above and in one of these little holes. But the farther we go this way, the worse our wind gets if they did go up. Second guess. We think they went up over the top like 18, 19,000 feet. So we can't go there and pursue them. There's not enough hours in the day to do that. A couple hundred yards across these chutes. Could be laying anywhere.
In Cameroon, Rob and the team find fresh bongo tracks just on the edge of the jungle, reigniting the almost lost hunt. We're trying to get back on this bongo, pick up his tracks again. I look at Patrick's waving us over. Man, we follow him in, I get behind my big me John, and we aren't in the woods 20 yards, and there's a fresh bongo bed, practically still warm. He's back up, so we, we lost the track for a minute. They found the bed, and we're going. Finding broken branches, fresh scat. We know we're closing in on this bongo village. The signs are promising, but being this close to the most critical time of the hunt, one mistake could blow the entire day. This is the most important moment of, of the hunt. Where to release the dogs? Now we just release because the thing was here. We just warned it. Let's go. We're close enough to this bongo now. We're going to release the dogs. And our hope is they're going to get them at bay. With the dogs on the move, the team trails behind and waits to hear their cue. I'll stay with A bark means the dogs have found a bongo, and the race is on to get there before he flees. I can hear the dogs barking up ahead. I know they got this animal at bay. I gotta get up there and do my job. Get a good shot. Next time on True Magnum TV. There's no way I missed that tour. This is one difficult hunt that I wouldn't want to have to do over again. The second I pulled the trigger, I just knew that I had to make it count. These guys are depending on me to help promote this beautiful area and this wonderful hunting outfit. Pretty tough to work all through that. You want so bad to have success but it's gotta be right putting everything together in your head and it's, and it's really frustrating. And uh, get more out, I mean traditionally we... <laughs>